Good morning, everyone. Go ahead and sign in. As I said earlier, make sure you have the uh, handouts that I gave you in the back. If you do sign in, please make sure I at least have your email address so I can send you a full PDF version of the entire guide pieced together. So who here was at the previous Facebook class? Good, most of you. And who's the first time here? And that's okay. Great. So what we're covering today is specifically on Facebook ads. And we're going to break it down to simplify it for you. Remember today is not walking out saying I'm a Facebook ad master. That's just not how it works. <laughs> However, I want you to start thinking about ads. You're going to walk away with strategies you can use now. I'm going to show you a simple way of running them and then a more advanced way. And the best thing will be some demographics will show you that you can actually see who viewed what ad, what was responsive. There's a lot of analytics that you get with Facebook, which is amazing. So we're really going to break that down for you. Um, for those who don't know me, my name is Jay Cermak. I am the Director of Agent Services here and trainer extraordinaire for Keller Williams. Um, I've been a licensed agent since 2010. I've been with Keller Williams for four years, um, since 2013. And then I've been here in this office now for just over three months. <coughs> So my background was actually in technology. I've worked for Apple doing computer tech support. If you ever call that Apple, um, Apple Care, you probably reached me at some point. So I would have been one of those at-home advisors. I've worked for Disney doing computer tech support, Nationwide Insurance, and other others. And when I got my business degree, I decided to go into real estate, mainly because I thought investment properties would pay off my student loan debt. And I'm still no investment properties yet, but we're getting there. So. <laughs> Um, the goal today isn't to overwhelm you with Facebook. It will feel overwhelming, I'll warn you now, because it's a big system. There's a lot of things to do. However, I want to break it down for you so that you at least can walk away today with an idea of what you want to do, at least a basic ability to run an ad maybe for one of your listings. I'm going to show you a sample today. Um, we're going to run one of Dud Fredback's uh, listings from his website and show you how I would run that ad for a special area. I will give you some other ideas as well. You'll see I've got a couple samples up here. I ran ads this week so that I could see ones that responded well, what didn't. And mine were a mix of getting listing leads in the area as far as people wanting a CMA on their home. I also ran some for profit share to um, hire recruits so I can advertise that Keller Williams is looking for amazing agents to join us. So I'll show you some of what I've done for those. You'll learn the good and the bad from them. So one of them didn't do as well, and you'll see that it cost me more per click, and I'll explain what that means to you. So the two handouts I gave you, the first one is really the step-by-step -step of how to run an ad and where you can go with it. This is the stapled together guide. You'll notice it says page 13 because it comes out of my big Facebook strategies guide that's a full PDF. So if you were in the class last time, you already have the guide. This is replacing what was in there for the ads. So the ad screenshot from the guide were about six months old. And of course, Facebook changed everything in there. So now this guide has the new screenshots as of last night to make sure I have the latest version as of yesterday. <laughs> um, so this is the handout for it. And then at the end of the class, as long as you gave me your email address, I'm going to send a PDF of all of it put together so that all these attachments are in one nice PDF, which will also help because in the back of this handout are links for a lot of the resources. While I've been using Facebook for many years and I have a lot of experience with it, I didn't want you just to take my word for it. So I like to study what the industry is doing, what others are doing to be successful, so that I can bring that knowledge to you, so it's not just Jay said to do this, because there's not one right way to do it. You will hear a different opinion from pretty much everybody doing Facebook ads, and to me, some of them come across as I'm coming from a marketing standpoint and how I market people, yet my idea is I'm coming as an agent saying how would I want to communicate with the clients, and we're going to help you at least come up with an idea of what that's going to look like for you. So in the PDF, the links will be clickable. On here, these are some of the resources you can uh, click on. So I think I'm going to go ahead and start with um, the first part, this little Facebook handout strategies. 
So what I did with this is I wanted to give you some newer changes. I did a video this morning of three strategies for Facebook to keep in mind when it comes to ads. The first one people always have asked me is, well, what's the difference between a Facebook boost, like a boosted post, versus a Facebook ad? So who here has ever ran a Facebook boost or maybe a Facebook ad? So we have a couple people that might have dabbled in it or tried it. At the end of the day, you cannot run any advertising if you don't have a business page. So if you're in the class right now, I already did a class recently on how to create your business page. Um, I'd recommend you watch that video. You can find it on YouTube, and if you're with Keller Williams, we have it on KW Connect. At the end of the class, I'll share where those resources are, but that's really how to set one up because you won't have access to these ad tools unless you have a business page, right? So if you think about it from a business standpoint, everything that you pay for from an advertising standpoint needs to be in the business side of Facebook, yet we were talking about it last time. Personally, you still need to connect with people. So I still want to reiterate, while the ads will be great and you'll reach people you haven't met before and they're not going away, don't forget to have relationships with people on Facebook if you want to take advantage of your relationships and if you want to take advantage of um, re you know, strengthening your connections, right? We're in a relationship business, yet at times my Facebook page can only reach so many likes based on who of my friends are willing to like it. And eventually, I'm going to need to grow that audience to people I haven't met yet, which is ideally why you'd be running an ad anyways. Because if you know me, like me, and trust me, I probably don't have to spend as much money on you to get business as long as I'm communicating with you on a regular basis, whether it's a mailer, calling you, or meeting you out and about, right? So that I don't have to spend as much money on. Yet, at the end of the day, we all need to grow our database. Right, And Facebook's a powerful tool to grab that because there's over 2 billion users a month actively on Facebook. Now, do any of you have a 2 billion database? No, that's okay. Yet, is it possible that you could find your business out of those people? Yes. So that's what I want to talk about today. So the difference between a Facebook boost is a boost is your ability to take a great post. So you'd have to already have a post before you can boost it. And if you've ever created a Facebook page post, you've seen that little boost icon or you'll get a little promo showing you, hey, boost this ad now and reach 20,000 people, right? That's kind of the concept. The difference of it is it's a light version of advertising. You cannot edit that post once you boost it, right? You're basically boosting what you already created. So I wouldn't spend money if no one's liking that post or it's not really well written because you're probably not going to reach many people. However, if you have a post that's getting a lot of interaction from your clients and people on your business page naturally, I would pay to reach people outside of the area that maybe don't know me yet to get experience that post, knowing it got such great results. It's a great way to spend some dollars and boost it out. Now, you're not going to have the full advertising suite when you do that, yet it is a good way to take something that already is doing well and just reach more people or maybe post it again after a couple months. So Dustin Sickinger, at our last class, we showed an example. He did a video, and he likes to do a video contest of a coming soon property, right? It's not on the market officially yet, and he doesn't say the address. He just says, a home in Carmel, coming on the market with three bedrooms, two bath, guess the price. And his guess the price strategy is, if you guess it correctly, the first prize wins like a $100 gift card. Second wins a $50 gift card or something, $25, and then the third gets a thumbs up. <laughs> However, he gets a lot of interaction normally with that. So what we did was we just boosted that post. We took what he already did and shared it with more people, and the last time we looked at it, over 6,000 people watched it. Wow. You think that's a difference of getting a couple people who can reach on your business page? adding the people on your personal page might get more reach and then being able to pay to get it out there to people who might be interested in it, right? Facebook's smart about this. They don't just necessarily show all the videos that aren't really relevant to you. If you've ever noticed yourself on Facebook, I'll, it's the weirdest thing. I'll talk about something and then I'll see an ad like five seconds later on Facebook, right? They're always in tune with what you want to know about. So they're more likely to get an ad even if I do something simple in front of the right people than me just saying, hey, world, pick this video, right? And most of us, I think that's what we do. We say, hey, I'll run an ad in all the United States for $2 a day and hope someone clicks on it. 
It's not how it's going to work. <laughs> so we'll go into that. And why you want a Facebook ad is there's unlimited potential. I can't cover everything that Facebook ads do today. You're going to see a lot of things in there. And Facebook has their own really well-written guide on what everything is in there. What I'm going to challenge you today is to start thinking about what would your first ad look like. Do you need buyers? Do you need sellers? What's your focus? And when you're looking at that, it's not just I want all buyers. Maybe it's I'm looking for that first time home buyer. Or I'm looking for that move up buyer. Or maybe that seller that needs to sell their home for the first time. Right? That's a different seller for the first time than someone who sold their home five times. Right? At the end of the day, what you need to decide is what is your goal? And from that goal, who's the right audience for it? Now, I'm not talking about discriminating against anybody. We'll look at what Facebook says about the fair housing rule. They are looking at that to an extent. However, I want to make sure my message reaches the right person. So it's something we call targeting. Making sure that I target the right person so that my pictures might look like a young family buying a home would be a good message for that first time home buyer. Versus that same message may not apply to the empty nester getting ready to sell their house, right? Looking at the young family wondering, oh, I remember back in the day. I'm not going to reach the same people. <coughs> so that's what we want to talk about as far as that goes. So let's first look at what you can do to start creating an ad. So I'm going to go to the normal Facebook side of this. I'm right now in the ad manager. If you haven't been in here in a while, even all the ads written about how to run an ad, all the recent guides, it changed like two weeks ago. This is constantly evolving. So even the guide I give you today, probably in two weeks, is going to have another option added. Like you now have the ability to private message people as an ad, which is powerful. Because that's a great way to get in front of somebody. It's more like a text message now. Because people respond to that on Facebook differently. And something that I don't have time to go into today, but I want you to think of, is they have a term called retargeting. It's the ability to use Facebook's tracking with something they call a Facebook pixel. And what it's going to do is track that I came from Facebook and went to Jordan's website. And then I can run an ad to only target people who went to Jordan's website. So that way I can have a message, maybe a pop-up message that says, hey, thank you so much for visiting my website today. Did you find anything you're looking for? Question mark. Right? Do you think I'm more likely to get a response if they see me everywhere and hear from me by retargeting them than just, I saw your ad once, went to your website, and then I never heard from you again? You've all witnessed this. I'm sure you bought something from Amazon and then felt Amazon was stalking you. They were in your email. They were on the websites. You were seeing things that suggested purchases you did all over Facebook. Why don't we be the same person for that? It's about being top of mind, and that's what retargeting is going to do. So I'll show you pieces of that, yet it's a class on its own to really do the retargeting. Your first thing is going to be, what will your first ad be? What do you want it to be? Now, when you're thinking of who do you want to reach, you've got to start off with, what are you offering? If it's a first time home buyer, what is it that I would offer to them? Maybe it's a buying guide. You know, I don't know that they necessarily want to come to me just to find some houses right away because I haven't really shown my value. We know most consumers are going to go to a site like Realtor.com, Zillow, Trulia, because they have 24 7 marketing teams telling the world to choose us to start your search. Yet, all of those services need us at some point, whether we're buying it from them or they're connecting a client to us. So something of value you'd want to think of when it's a buyer would be download the tips for buying a home, right? We all have a buyer's guide if you're meeting with clients here. Keller Williams gives you one. It's in KDB Connect through Ignite or eEdge. Even our Michael Lewis marketing suite here in this office, right? We have a marketing division that we pay for that's created a nice, beautifully done <clears throat> listing presentation and buyer's presentation. Couldn't you use a couple pieces of that to send a client. Like here's a chart of how the process of buying a home looks like. I think you should connect with your mortgage person and get what are the uh, things you need to qualify for a mortgage. What are the myths, right? There's all kinds of things of value that people will sign up for if it's interesting to them. So at the end of the day, you have to figure out what that content is you're offering. And I would encourage you to either have it on your website. So today I'll show you, we're gonna take it from Doug's website, his listing, and we're going to run an ad in a zip code for that listing and show you how we can run it and how to get people to interact with it. 
right? So that's some of the things you're going to think of, and I hope to spark some ideas. I'm going to show you some examples. Um, there's no wrong answer. I will be honest, it's not an exact science per se, even though we have all this analytical data, because everyone does it differently. And in some cities it works one way, and in another it works a different way. We're in Indianapolis. Do you, our, from Zillow's standpoint, are most of our zip codes competitive? If you want to have the zip code of Carmel right now, are there a million other agents out there with that same zip code who are paying for it or two, right? So in some rural areas where no one's doing Facebook ads, they can get a very low cost click and a huge return because no one's doing it. Doesn't mean you don't have an opportunity. I'm just telling you it will respond differently. So you hear somebody say, I spent $2 a day and I got 15 leads in one week from this, this ad. Well, that worked for them maybe in another small town. For you, you might just spend more money, or you might get quality leads, but less of them. To me, at the end of the day, as long as you get a lead out of any of this, it's usually worth it. Unless you're spending thousands of dollars a month, which I don't encourage you to do yet, until you have it down. The best thing about Facebook is you can run just some low-cost ads to test it out. Now, if you're going to do that, I will tell you, if you run an ad, please do it for at least three days or more because you won't get enough results in 24 hours. Even at three days, you may or may not. I tend to run them for at least seven days because some of the things that are gonna happen is you have the ability to edit the ad partially through. So another strategy I'm gonna teach you today is that you need to go in there and evaluate, did anyone like this picture when I posted this? Did, did people interact with this version of my ad or did they react with a different version? And maybe you turn off those other versions or reword it and change the way it's interacting before your money runs out. So that's a really cool opportunity is that you can change that. Now most marketers that have the money will say, hey, we spend $500 a month and we'll run it for 30 days because that really, at the end of the time, it'll be like the cheapest you can pay per click because the longer you run it and the more you update it and get, get if Facebook seems it's relevant to people, the cheaper and cheaper that click's going to be for you. So you get more leads. You do not need to have a ginormous budget to test this out. And then once you know, here's how my area responds, here's how my type of leads get the most interaction, then you can spend a little bit more money to get more leads. Does that make sense? And we'll talk about that today, that one of the things you want to look at is what was that cost of that lead, right? We know what Facebook is going to give you a budget. They're going to ask you how much do you want to spend in this week, $35. What's your lifetime budget the whole time you're running this? Yeah, you need to think of, if I spent $50 on an ad and I got one sale out of it, right? what did that cost me? $50 minus the commission I made? That's huge. That's not what you normally get. It's definitely a higher return than doing a mailer. It's going to be a higher return than a lot of the marketing you're doing. And time. Because that's time that you could have been up trying to find this person by door knocking or calling. Not saying that that doesn't work yet. That's the power of this, that a low-cost ad might find me the right buyer for this house, may get it sold, or at least get me some buyer leads off of this listing that I can turn around and turn into a sale. Is that something everyone's interested in today? Is that why we're here, right? Perfect. So let's look at the structure of how you create an ad. So I'm going to go into my normal Facebook, and I will warn you now, I have no control over what shows up on the homepage. <laughs> Let me connect to the internet here. Sorry, thought I already did that. Okay, so, tower. so as you know with Facebook, it's whatever people are posting and liking. And I don't know about you, I've already noticed a lot of changes with stuff. Like I've been wishing people happy birthday and then out of nowhere, I'm seeing posts that they posted on my normal timeline again. So it's interesting that I'm seeing a lot of great stuff. So this is okay, this isn't a bad post, that's good. So the first thing to point out is where you go to create an ad is down here under create. There's a couple ways, right? Now, before you create the ad, make sure you have a business page because you won't have the ability to. When you're in the ad center, it's going to ask you what system, right, which page are you going to run this ad under? So from a recruiting standpoint, me running an ad that says join Keller Williams under J Sales Fort Lauderdale isn't going to be as effective because they're going to be like, well, why is this team hiring me? Unless you're hiring for yourself, right? However, this ad is effective because I have the power of our office page to run the ad under. Not saying you have that. However, 
think of that in mind. If you're going to run an ad for your clients, then it should be a real estate business page. But if you're thinking about running maybe for profit share or the ability to help grow your profit share tree with Keller Williams, I would consider having a page just about recruits or realtors, right? A generic page that might be um, real estate careers. Because don't you have experiences that you can add to that? Aren't there enough resources from Indiana State to say how to get your license, National Associate Realtors, here's the top 10 tips of your first year in real estate? Couldn't you make a page of content about that? And then from there, just share it with people maybe interested in getting into real estate or with another company who might want to check us out. So when you see the ads that I'm running, I use the office page, but I want you to challenge yourself to think if that's something you want to run an ad for one day, then think about having a separate site just about careers. And you don't have to recreate it. There's a lot of agents that have already figured that out for themselves. They'll have a separate website just to educate others about real estate and ask them to check out a Keller Williams office. Right, build a relationship with them, and then have a business page just for the purpose of running Facebook ads. Okay, so let's start an ad here. Create ad. So, following in your guide here, this is the newest screenshot of all kinds of different options they've given you here. So, I'll zoom in so you can see this better because it's basically white on white and light gray, which seems to be the new trend on all the websites right now. Okay, so can we all see that? So you've got a couple options here, right? Brand awareness, reach. Brand awareness is really, hey, I want to tell people about my business page. I want you to like my business page. Check it out. Sometimes when you finally reach a point that you need to pay to get more people to like your page locally, this is the type of ad that you'd be running. So that way people have an opportunity to come to your business page and like it, sharing vid you know, um, value on it. If you haven't updated your business page in a couple months, I probably wouldn't run an ad. But if you have at least consistent content on there, that if someone came to your page right now, they can find something of value and that you're going to continuously update it, right, systematically, then yes, I would run an ad saying, hey, I'm ready now to reach people that I don't know. So I don't have the ability to go through that one now because I think we'll run out of time. Yet yeah, that would be a really good one to um, do that. So if you see the little I next to each of these, it gives you a description, right? Increase awareness of your brand by reaching people who are more likely to be interested in it. So I can target maybe homeowners in a neighborhood and be their local realtor and that specialist, right? You can get down to zip codes. You can do within 10 miles is the closest that you can do in an area. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Reach is your ability to reach the maximum number of people. So it's a different style of it. I haven't experienced that one yet. It's supposed to be another way to just reach more people. Sometimes I run ads just so people know who I am. Not with the goal of I want 600 likes out of it, but at least, if anything, if you go on Facebook, I want my name to keep popping up. So when I do door knock, you know who I am. Or when I do call, oh yeah, I've heard Jordan Moody's name again. How do I know you? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I've been seeing you on my Facebook everywhere. Even if you haven't liked me, it's another way to just be aware of it. Right? Because unless they're ready today to buy or sell, they're not thinking about you, most likely. That's why it's being top of mind. We want the brand awareness with it. So there's also this little guide up here about help choosing an objective. Facebook's written us out in a more detailed description about which option will be best for you. So awareness is great if you want to tell people who you are and increase the odds of them liking your page. Most of us are probably doing the middle one here for consideration. Traffic is pointing people to a website. So when we run the listing ad for Doug, I'm going to be running it as traffic to drive them from Facebook to his listing on his website. Right? And the reason we've talked about this in the last class, you want content on your website. Yes, you want listing information if it's your listing because you're the agent they're going to call. However, if I'm on there, I don't want to just see your listing. I'm hoping your website has a resource for me, like a blog or some seller resources, local things that I can learn about. Right? That's going to help keep me on that site longer. It can also be traffic for a landing page. Who's heard of the term landing page at least? I'm sure we've all clicked on one. There's a lot of services that can do that for you. And a landing page would be, instead of going to my website, here's a simple, nicely formatted page that says, hey, give me your name and your email address and download this PDF now. Right? That's another way to get someone just to capture an email address. 
so that you can target them again from Facebook ads. You can also give them something of value. People will give email addresses to register. Now they may not give you your phone number if you haven't earned that right yet. Yet at least if I have your email address, I'm likely to start keeping in touch with you and I can stay in touch with you on Facebook because you at least went from Facebook to something of value. And if you're wondering how do I create something like this, doesn't the National Association of Realtors give you all these little PDFs that you can download that says, hey, here's the 10 tips for staging your home. They've already got things that you can give as value. It doesn't always have to just be your branded thing and your name. It could just be you connecting them to a resource. You do not need to recreate the wheel to give them something of value. Find something that's already done or add your brand into it. And the National Association of Realtors and your local board already gives you that information. Don't they send you a monthly um, stats report about what's happening in the area? So maybe you run a little post that says, hey, want to find out what's happening in Carmel? Download the Board of Realtors official Carmel sales guide for November 2017, right? Whatever it is, whatever the date was, that's something someone might be willing to sign up for. And then you connected it to them. And then I could put them on a mailer or an email list and every month email that to them so they don't have to sign up again, Right? That's kind of those goals. So that would be one of those things to do. Engagement, this is your ability. Sometimes we just want a comment on my post, right? The name of the game now is interactions. We talked about that in the last class. What's changing is a like isn't going to be enough anymore. If you just hit like on a friend's post, yes, Facebook says, okay, you found that relevant. But if you left a comment that was more than just great, like, oh, your photos look great in your vacation. How was it? and then that person replied back to you, Facebook's kind of like counting that up as points and saying, wow, you're having an interaction. You know, Wana must be important to you because you're actually having a conversation with her through Facebook. So engagement is one of those ads now that you will want to run because that means I'm running something like, guess the price of this home. And then people can interact on it and say, hey, write your guests below. We're going to do a drawing on this date. Right? Or Kristen's doing a great video now where she's doing a contest for the sports games, like guess the score. Right? And having a contest around that. Contests are fun. People are go crazy for free things to win. They'll go crazy for a five dollar Starbucks card. It does not need to be a lot of money. Right? Don't we do that stuff? So we're a very competitive society. That's a great opportunity. Run a contest for that, right? Or um, I've known people that did guess the name of this house. Like, let's name this house. You know how HGTV, when they're going to look at a home, they're calling it something? Maybe you get a feedback from them of, hey, I need your help. We want to find a fun name for this house to advertise it in. What would you call it? And get their feedback. Because don't you think you get a lot of interaction? And then couldn't you comment to each person saying, that's a great name. I didn't think of that. Thank you. And what's Facebook doing in their head going, man, there's something here. They're interacting, so I'm going to keep showing you both of each other's posts more often. That's the goal of everything. So that would be a really great one. App install we don't need to do because this is for an application inside here, not your Keller Williams app. You'd have to have a Facebook developed app to do that. So you're most likely not going to be using that feature. But this is a newer one, video views. So I'm running an ad right now for video views. I share with you guys three tips for the 2018 Facebook strategies. And I wanted to do it for brand awareness and watches. And you'll see on mine, I got about 4,000 views by running it this way. And I targeted real estate agents, because it doesn't matter if you're a color homes or not, it was a real estate specific post all over the world. Because I wanted to make sure it was something that they knew about. Here's some of the changes for real estate in 2018 and things to consider. So you'll see that I reached my brand awareness and I pointed it to my KDB Connect video so that Keller Williams agents could follow me there. It's one of my goals has been growing my channel. Now that was a personal goal of making sure I reach my awareness and I use this to make sure I'm getting more views and getting in front of people, right? And I will tell you when you're thinking about your ad, start thinking visually now. What is it going to look like? Is it a simple picture of people outside of home saying download your free buyer's guide is it going to be something that you brand i'll show you how i did a branding for doug's post here shortly in canva right it's a website i mentioned before that lets you brand photos and add your logos to it um, you're going to have to start thinking about that good news is you don't have to be perfect at it facebook gives you a stock library of free images you have a right to use 
So it's okay if you don't know what image to put there. They have some that you can use. All right, some new ones here, lead generation. This is a newer one to drive your sales leads, such as email address from people interested in your brand or business. So that model may work. I haven't used it myself, yet you can explore that through the guide. And this is what's new, messages. The ability to send a private message to your brand. So I had a Remax agent recently pop up my private message saying, hey, I noticed you were uh, um, in Carmel and stuff. Are you looking to buy a home? Like, it had this nicely written message. Even though it said sponsored lightly, it was almost like she privately messaged me with a message that was like, hey, okay, what's this? Now, I'm not her right target audience because I work for a real estate company. However, and I am an agent, yet you can see the value of that if most people aren't doing that yet. To me, I don't know if I would start off with a message like that if I haven't gained her trust, right? So I think her strategy would have been better had she posted something like download this free guide or visit my website to search homes. And when I did that, then I got her message. It would have been more effective for me because then I would go, okay, wow, yeah, I was just on your site. Thank you for reaching out. I downloaded your guide. I love it, right? I'm going to have a conversation now because we broke the ice. I'm now feeling a little more comfortable that I went to your site and I can choose to talk to you or not. Has anyone else gotten any of those private message uh, ads yet or anything? A couple. It's all right. If you haven't gotten them yet, they're coming. And I think that's a frontier to look at is video, right? Because we talked about visual. Video ads do very well because we've already studied this last time. 80% of people right now online would rather watch your video about your blog than go read your blog. So imagine doing your video that says, hey, here's three things to know about buying your home. Give those three things, and for more information, check out my post below, right? And then have a button that says learn more and go to my website and see this whole long post about the whole guide or more information. Your video should be a teaser. <clears throat> but if you give them some information, am I more likely to sign up for it if I saw value in that first 30 seconds? Yes. You'll increase the odds of somebody saying, yes, Jay seems knowledgeable. I want to know what else he has to say. Versus, hi, download my guide today, click here, and someone's like, well, I don't know who he is. I'm not looking to buy. Skip, 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 right? The whole name of the game now is stopping the scroll. So messaging would be a great way for me. I think it's better for retargeting. If, at least if I know you've been on my site, then it's okay to see a private message of me saying, hey, Juana, thanks for visiting my website. Is there anything I can help you with? Question mark. And just stop it there. Because you'll either say, no, I'm good, or you'll respond. That's a conversation. More than she went to my website and I don't know what happened. She didn't tell me because she didn't sign up for anything. She didn't look at homes. Yet surprisingly, if you look at your analytics on your sites, if you track it through Google, you might be surprised that people are coming back to your site and you don't even know it. There's a lot of people that revisit websites or maybe they're reading your blogs. You're not noticing because they didn't hit the like or comment button, yet they're going to your website over and over again. Imagine being able to track that. Facebook would know that and say, thank you. You've been on my website 10 times. we got to get one in front of you. You're getting close to doing something. Or at least, if anything, you find her a value, and I want to connect the two together. So that's some of those ads there. And then to the right, there's more things like conversions, catalog sales, store visits. We don't really have a catalog, and our store may or may not have some homes on it. I think your website can do more for that. So does this kind of make sense how you can choose one? But you have to think of what it's going to be. Where do I want you to go right now? So when I was thinking of a great example for you, I figured you may or may not care much about profit share or me showing my training videos. So that's why I thought, let's do an example of a listing, since most of us either have a listing that we want to advertise and get it out to people. Now, I've mentioned Lori Ballen before in Las Vegas, and she had a video recently, um, just a couple weeks ago, that she's been running an ad that was simple. Like, we're not talking about demographics. She didn't go crazy saying confirm this or that. Simple. And all she did was great, a great image, which we're going to do, point to her website to say click here for information or download information now. And then the conversion was higher because it was simple and reached the people in that zip code. Right? Surprisingly, I know people buy outside the zip code, but you're going to see when we choose a zip code, it's amazing how many people live in that zip code. Like when I choose Karma right now, I think it told me about 22,000 people live in that zip code. 
So if I'm running a couple dollar ad that reaches 600 people a day, am I gonna reach that budget if I'm running it for a week? No, so why add six more zip codes if I can't even dominate the one zip code? <laughs> so I thought it was a unique strategy because I've been doing ads where I drop a pin and kind of do 10 miles around, but maybe I'm reaching too many people and I'd be better off by location base to say, hey, choose your neighbor or move into this home. Now, another thing that she pointed out in this is make sure whatever your listing is that it's got great photos. If it's not the best photos, if it's dark pictures, if it's not a visually appealing home, you're probably not going to get the same interaction. You know, I'm not necessarily looking for the cardboard box downtown if that's what you're selling. <laughs> so that may not be the best market to run an ad for unless it was an investor one, right? Get this really cheap one and target investors only, that might have a different spin. Because that will help you if we know everything is visual now. I want to make sure that home is enticing enough for me to want to click and learn more. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, so we're going to choose traffic, and I'm going to go to the next. Now, it's going to tell me to name this something. So you might call it the address. Um, this one is Harmony Subdivision, so I'll just say Harmony Listing. It's for you to call it what you want. Um, here, they give you the option to say, do I want to track and pay by landing page views or link clicks? Since I'm having them go to Doug's website, I want the link clicks, right? I want to pay for who physically clicks on it. But the byproduct is people will still see it. I'll see more people will see my post and see I have a listing over and over again if I keep doing these ads. Even if they don't click on it, I'm building brand awareness. Just like your sign out in the front yard is building brand awareness. So I've got on link clicks, and we're going to do continue. Yes, Jordan. So you're saying that the only time you would pay if you selected landing page, whatever, if someone scrolls down, looks at it, but doesn't click the link, like there's no payment, so you could run Correct. it for eternity, and people would just keep saying it. Right, well, you'll keep paying it for eternity. Like there's right. still, so, someone's going to click on it, trust me. Sure. However, um, yes, it means you can reach more people with showing it. That's why there's not really a completely bad ad, because at the end of the day, aren't you just exposing your business to more people? Right. If anything, for brand awareness, right? If I asked you to name all the brands of potato chips right now, maybe you'll name two or three. Same thing happens for real estate. It's even less. For most realtors, they'll either tell you a brand name or maybe somebody if they have it. If they can't name a person in two seconds, there's an opportunity for you to be their agent. Yes. Uh, so then what's the difference between landing page versus click? Because if you click, would yeah. that take you to Well, the landing, landing page on this one, I think it's Facebook can build you a landing page. Okay. So that it's basically their own product of landing page versus you paying to go to an outside website. So there are websites that do landing pages. Facebook does have the ability to create your own on their site so that it can ask those questions and do the same functionality. Um, that would be for theirs. But that is a good question. So there's other ways of doing this, but my goal today is let's show you a realistic listing that you can do and post it. So first thing it's going to ask here, right? You can give your ad set name. This is what, just for insight, one of the things you're going to learn is what's called an ad set or your target area. Save these. If I'm targeting Carmel over and over again, then I want to save that so I don't have to recreate it each time. Maybe I'm targeting first-time home buyers for downtown. Isn't that kind of some set parameters that I want to save and use again later? So one of the things it's going to ask you to do is like save your audience and save your ad set so you can do this again. Just name it something, right? Right now it's just general because the generic is U.S., the entire United States, anybody 18 or older. It's kind of the default setting in the system. Now, if I run an ad for a listing at Carmel... Do you think I'm going to reach the people I need to if I run for the entire United States from 18 and up? No. Now, I'll show you that there's a way to kind of still run it. Um, like I said, Lori Ballen did one recently where she did the simple format, which she didn't choose anything but a zip code. So at least it was the people in that zip code, and she didn't care about age or demographic and stuff, but she got more people to view it. So it just increased her odds. There's no wrong answer. A lot of this is going to be you testing it out because that neighborhood might respond differently. That luxury price point might have a different response rate than someone in a lower price range. I mean, right now, we're getting offers before homes on the market if it's under 300 around here, right? It's crazy out there. So that one, I would run that ad, not for the buyer, like for leads. I'd get crazy amount of leads if I ran an ad saying, hey, 
look at this new construction, $260,000 home in Carmel. I'd probably get a lot of buyers to sign up saying, I'm looking, I'm looking, oh, we just sold it. However, I'm going to help you find another one. Right? Couldn't you get a lot of leads from that? Okay, so you would give it a name. Now it's going to ask you here, where do you want the traffic? So website is where I wanted to go. There is the ability for an app if you had a separate app within Facebook. You're not going to use that, but you could do it from Messenger. So eventually you can do one that's just nothing but messages back and forth with people. Again, I still think that's a better method for retargeting when you're ready to go after those people saying, hey, thanks for coming to my site once. Is there anything I can help with today? So leave it on website. Do you have an option for an offer? So I know some people are doing offers. I would click here to learn more about what they want you to do because it can save them. It can give them reminders. You know, Adam's running one now where he's throwing in the home warranty. So that way it's something that they don't have to pay for, right? It's going to save costs. So that would be something as an offer. I mean, we don't have a lot of opportunity for offers, and we have to be careful as far as what we're allowed to offer and not offer, yet that's something that you would offer, right? Or you can even just offer something that people don't realize. You know, hire me as your buyer's agent and pay no uh, real estate commission. Well, we know that that's common sense. Buyers still believe they have to pay you, right? Isn't there a misconception about that in the world? So that technically could be an offer you might run. It's just an idea if you're not getting the results you want, right? So then we get to audiences. This is where you want to save one. And this is the can be the magic if you really want to narrow down to detailed targeting, right? That's what we're going to get to. If you're targeting ad, let's say I speak Spanish, maybe I want to run the ad in Spanish, in Espanol, and I'd want to reach the right people. That would be a great way for languages. Now you have to be careful. As we already know, right, fair housing rules, I want to preface that I'm targeting to make sure I reach the right person. I'm not doing it to discriminate against anybody else. So with that, because I know we'll get into a heated argument about the detailed targeting, because it can get specific. I mean, you can even get down to race, which we don't necessarily want to do. So I will pull up what Facebook's, where is it here? Fair housing and marketplace. So you already know what fair housing is, but I want you to know that while Facebook doesn't automatically block things because you said target only a Caucasian in this neighborhood, right? It is looking for that stuff. So if they believe that you're really being discriminatory, they're going to block it. And you can get reported. So I'd be careful with that, right? Presence of children, disability. <clears throat> to me, I'm doing it with the right intention of making sure that I'm only spending money on the right people. So it's a fine line. They haven't made an official statement on far of how the board will prosecute if they did, and Facebook hasn't done that. So it's still a conversation that there are no official rules for of what they're going to do. And sometimes your ad will be flagged for no reason. Adam had his. Nothing in there was discriminatory. Sometimes they're being cautious, and they'll block it at first, and give you an opportunity to say, oh, let me review it. Okay, we reviewed it. It's fine. And that's okay because we're in a tricky situation. Yes? So would the word family flag it then because it's talking about family Yeah, but we do single family home. That's a term that we use. So it, it's tricky. Um, yeah, I can't give you – you'll find it when you start typing it out as one of the tricks because I might just say perfect for first-time home buyers. But someone else might say, well, I'd like that home. And it's not like I'm trying to discriminate anybody else from it. So it's a gray area. That's all I can tell you. So they do have a policy on it right now, right? You must comply with Federal Fair Housing Act. You do get a pop-up on some of these ads telling you, does this ad meet and did you comply? Sometimes it doesn't ask that. Like boosting posts right now, I haven't seen that checkbox, yet I've seen it when I do an ad. So just know they are looking do your gut check. If you feel like, oh, this is going to like, you know, be discriminatory, it probably is. Yet, if you know that I see in my head right now, the perfect couple for this house is a young family who's just starting and they can grow into this house, right? That's a different mindset around running an ad to them. Yes. I wonder if it was the way it was done or posted. They keep changing things too. You know, at the end of the day, 
boosting isn't really my method. Boosting is good if you want to increase likes and get more interaction on it. I think if you run the ad though, you'd have the ability to tell them more and that feature would allow you to. So it's a good point though to bring up. I would run the same thing as an ad and see if they flag it the same way. You can reword it a little bit differently, put it on there because I mean, we're not the only real estate agents posting things out there. You've seen it. So there's got to be a reason for that. Like I said, the boosting is really just Facebook light. It's a light version of posting anything and you don't have all these controls that I'm showing you right now. So that's a good thing to point out. So there is a policy here. I wanted to point it out so that when we're going through here, it's not intentional that I'm trying to discriminate or keep people away from a house. I just want to make sure if I'm going to spend $50 to run an ad, I just want to reach the right people. And if I know another realtor isn't going to be the person buying a house for me, then why don't I say exclude realtors, right? If I know that I'm targeting that first time home buyer, that person at 65 plus is probably not the one looking to buy the home. And I'd want my imagery to be a younger lifestyle or younger family. So it is, it's a gray area. If you really have concerns or questions about it, I would check with the local board, right? The National Association of Realtors and then legal hotline to say, hey, would this be an issue? Right now, we're allowed to do it. Because there isn't anyone sitting on Facebook on every person's post monitoring it yet. But they are in discussions. So this came from an article I found on, from October of where Facebook had been sued for real estate things. Now they aren't, in the lawsuit anymore, they got out of it, yet it brought up the awareness of we need to pay attention. So for now, it's open, yet just use your best judgment. Okay, that's enough about that. So here's the listing that I want to send, which is a great listing on Doug's page. And I chose this one too, because not only is it great and for sale, um, it's also in a reasonable price range and it's new construction. So it'll definitely show well, and I just clicked out of it. So let's go back. <laughs> there we go. So, and it, $369.9, it's on the higher end of it, yet people are desperate. And aren't they pushing up the price point now? Mm -hmm. My family said they wouldn't spend anything over like $250 and stuff, and they just bought a place for $289. Because there wasn't anything with what they were looking for, mm -hmm. and they found it. So people are willing to push it higher because there's not a lot of stuff out there. So this is something that I'm going to be sharing New construction on it, because that's always something people look for too, right? Aren't they looking for either something newer or fully remodeled? What are the keywords that's going to get somebody to say, hey, I want to check this out? Because no one goes out there saying, hey, 70 Shag is back and says, oh, I want to click on that house, right? Aren't we always looking for updated? <laughs> you laugh, but that's the house my sister just bought. <laughs> because it had the right footprint and everything she needed, and she can grow into it. So she was okay. She saw it as her forever home, so she overlooked the Shag carpet. Yet, if you were a young couple that was just starting out your family, didn't have a big budget, you'd look at the shot carpet and like, oh, this is going to cost me a fortune to replace this whole house, right? Each house is going to reach a different person. So this is what I'm going to be sharing. Now, before I start sharing it and narrowing it down, um, I guess we should finish that first. Let's finish our demographics. Okay, so creating an audience. Now, this can be everybody in this location in the United States. Too far. So first thing I want to do is use the zip code. So this zip code is on my printout and it is 46074, thank you. Now this is what's cool, 46074, and you're gonna notice, what does it actually do? It actually maps out the zip code on the map for me. So it targets people here in the zip code. Now doing this, you're gonna start seeing on the right I now potential reach 31,000 people. So I'm probably good in this one zip code. I can add another one, but am I likely to reach 50,000 people if I only run this for a week or for three days? Not unless you're going to spend a lot of money. Right? Does that make sense? So this is going to change to the right every time you do it. Now green's good, but I'm okay if it's specific. So you will hear that the more you narrow it down, the more you have to pay per click because you really using data, right? They're going to charge you to say, hey, I want to find out confirmed homeowners, then we're going to kind of charge you a little bit more for the cost of your ad because we had to pay for that data. But that's okay to me because I'd rather have quality five leads than 60 clicks that no one did anything that wasn't even looking. 
right? So we're going to show that as well here. Now I can add another zip code if I want, or I could just leave it here. I can also do Carmel. And if I do by city, it's going to say within 25 miles, I can go up to 50, which would be way too big of an area, or I can go down to 10. And surprisingly, Indianapolis is so big that 10 miles doesn't even reach downtown. So when I was running an ad for our class to advertise to people here and downtown thinking, what's our area? I didn't type in Carmel. I said, drop a pin. And I kind of came here in the middle and then did a circle around that. So I was more likely to get centered. So you can type in an address or a zip code is the closest you can get. You can type in a city, but it's going to do the lowest, the closest it's going to get is within 10 miles. So sometimes zip code is a smart way just to say, I only want to target this. Now, it doesn't do subdivision names, so if you're targeting that one subdivision, I would do a, um, I would do a zip code, and I'd make sure my message talks about the subdivision. Because if I'm in that zip code and in that subdivision, it's going to catch my attention right away. Or if I plan to be in that subdivision one day, I'm going to recognize it. And at least running the zip code ad is going to reach a closer amount of people than saying 10 miles within this area, I want to send a message to that one little name. So I'll go ahead and take those out of there, delete. Like you see, you can do more than one. So I can have different zip codes, put different ones in here and target, right? Maybe I wanted uh, 46032 next to it as well. Now I've got both of them together. And now my reach is 91,000 people. It's a lot. So we'll just keep it simple. Now what I was learning with, from Lori was just to stop there. I'm targeting that zip code and I don't care about anything else. So if you want the easy version of running your ad, do this. Don't worry about being a specialist. Don't worry about narrowing it down to the exact audience. Just run an ad in that neighborhood and reach these 22,000 people because usually they're looking to either stay in that area or bring someone nearby. Right? You're going to reach people with it. I mean, our ideal goal is to sell the home, but how many of us sell the home from the sign in the yard once in a while? Our goal is to get buyers. So this is going to help attract people saying, I'm looking for a house like that. Do you have anything else? Because isn't that what we do at an open house? I come in here to see, is it the right bedrooms? Do I like the layout? Is it the right price? Nope, this doesn't work for me. Thank you. Have a great day. Hold on. There's more homes. Let me show you. So that's why she does it that way. So right now, you'll also see my estimated daily reach. Ba -ba -bum. So I can reach 31,000 with that zip code. Oh, come on, I lost it. There it is. So I can reach between 470 people a day to 1,500 a day. Now that's just on the current budget, which is probably default to right now to $20 a day. So as you lower that, you reach less people, and that's okay. I don't expect to spend $60,000 or reach every person here unless you have that budget. Again, for a few bucks, I'm okay. And the goal is between 6 to 38 link clicks. Now that's a wide range, yet... At the end of the day, what, what would six link clicks do if they actually signed up? If I got one of those leads from it and that lead had a conversation that led to a sale, didn't it just pay for itself? And a huge return on investment for that one ad. The more of these you get, the more it's going to change. So that's what you want to pay attention to the right is as that's changing, what does that do? Now here's something I did discover that they didn't cover in the video. Everyone in this location, right? It does say... Everyone who lives in this location, people recently in this location, or people traveling. Now, I know it might cost me more for the ad, but don't you think if I'm looking for the seller there, I might do someone living in this location? Now, if you're just looking for a listing, it's okay if you visited. Maybe you were checking out listings in the area. I would target that person. Yet, keep in mind, you can exclude even this part to say, I only want to target sellers. Maybe I'm looking for listings. I would target the people living in that area, not everyone traveling in. So you have that ability there if you really want to explore it. We'll leave it alone because that's what they were teaching us to do. Just know you can narrow it down there, all right? You can do it by age as well. Now, she's not. Now, this home is about $360,000. How many 18-year-olds do you think are going to buy that $360,000? Maybe a few YouTube stars or somebody who has a Bitcoin empire. <laughs> not a lot of people. Now, again, this comes into that gray area of, well, if I change this to say, well, I'm targeting like 25 to 45, 
right? Am I discriminating against age? Not my intention. My goal is I want to target people likely to buy that home that are either that first time buyer or maybe it's a move up home because it's slightly larger than the other home or newer than their first home. It's your choice how you want to label that and how you think about it. Um, languages, this would be your ability to choose a target language and I would just write it in that language, right? So if you have, uh, to me, isn't that a referral skill? If you speak a language and I've got a referral that needs Spanish, I'm likely to get a referral fee because I don't speak Spanish and I want to help that customer. So it's one of those, again, gray areas. Is it discriminating because I targeted the ad in Spanish but that was the client I was going after. You see, you can see why it's a dilemma. You can see how both sides can argue one way or the other. Yet, for now, I have that ability to narrow it down and target a specific language. And in that case, I would write the ad in that language. If you're going to do it by language, knowing this is my message to them, write it in that language. Make sure your graphics have that language written in there or something. So it is powerful, and especially around here, when predominantly people are speaking English. There is a demographic that needs help with that. So that's what those are for. And then this you can get lost in for hours. The detailed targeting. Include people matching at least one of the following. So I told you right now we didn't do anything on this listing ad and just said go forward, right? If you want to, on our page uh, 14, second page, I went into some examples of how I would target one for um, looking for homeowners. So these are examples of some of the demographics that you can narrow down by. So first thing would be homeowners, right? Wouldn't I want to target, if I want to see, do you want to find out what your home is worth today? Wouldn't I want to confirm a homeowner? Now, not people interested in homeowners. There's a demographic from the census that says, Emily's a confirmed homeowner. Right? And I want to make sure my message reaches her. That's what I would want if that's my target. So I would look for the demographic of homeowner because I don't want to spend money on a renter clicking on it if they have no home to sell. Or a high school kid who has no intention of buying anything yet. Now, yes, they have parents they can tell about, but how many of your kids come to you saying, ooh, I saw this great home online, let's buy it. It's just not how we work, right? It's powerful that this tool can narrow down to those people. So homeowners is the one I did there. Now, yes, you can add more than one, but it says it includes who match at least one. So if I said homeowners, it's like an or statement. Homeowners or, you know, renters or whatever your message is. So I like to narrow it down even farther, which probably costs me a ton. Um, so I do narrow audience further and add another one. Must also match. So this becomes the and statement. They're a homeowner and. So what I would do is homeowner and there's an option for likely to move. So you ask, well, why is there likely to move? What does that do? Here's the description on the right. Out of that, there's 4.6 million people, not in this one area, right, in the U.S. And this source is from a partner category from Epson, and they basically study your patterns of how you interact online. Are you looking at Home Depot for remodeling things? Are you applying and checking out mortgage rates, right? It's creepy how much data they have. <laughs> Yet, yeah, isn't the whole world already watching anyways? I mean, everything you own right now, somebody already targeted you in some way to modify it so that you would buy it. That's the power of the system. So I can come here and see what that is. You can read a description to the right. Now, this one's saying no more than 15% of your spend will be used to cover data costs. They're going to charge me for that. So if I'm spending 50 bucks, I'm probably going to have a fee to pay for this data, but isn't that data powerful? I'd rather spend money on this data knowing I'm getting a homeowner who they're classifying as likely to move based on their patterns so that I actually have a chance of getting a sale. Because me giving you a CMA isn't enough just to say, well, find out what your home is worth and sell it in 20 years. Well, that's good and I can add it to my database for 20 years. Really my goal is to get the home sold or to find another home to list today and target my message to that person. So in this case, I would be okay with paying that demographic. If you come in here to suggest or browse, it's amazing what you can find in here. You can get down to income levels. You can get down to, um, for demographics, education levels. I can go down to financial. What are their net worth? What's their income? 
life events, right? Maybe they had a birthday recently, right? Friends, there's a lot of data in here. Newlyweds, recently moved. There's a lot of people you can target. Parents, relationships, work, right? Employees, job titles, interests. There's a lot. Clearly, I don't have time to show you all those, but that's why it's important to think about who is the person at the other end of whatever you're offering. And you get this data. So either the National Association of Realtors tells you a lot of this data. The first-time home buyers right now are millennials, or the first-time home buyers are in this age group, or they prefer this method of communication. That group might respond better to a Facebook message and might not ever click on a website link because they want to stay in Facebook. So you keep them there, right? There's generational things. There's all kinds of great stuff in there. So that's really where you can get powerful if you want to master that in there. So I did one likely to move. And then you'll notice my other three ones were I got to exclude some people. So I wanted to exclude some residential profiles of new movers. Are they likely to want to sell their home right now or find out the value of their home? No, they just bought a house. There's a category for recent home buyer. Nope, they don't want to find out what their home is worth right now. They're not going to sell unless they're having buyer's remorse. And recent mortgage borrower. Isn't that interesting? I can at least find. Maybe they refinance right now. Maybe they're not looking to sell their home. The whole reason I would narrow this down isn't ever to ignore or exclude anybody. It's just to make sure that I'm spending my money wisely. Right? Didn't we teach you how to run? Isn't today's class about effective ads? Would that be a more effective ad spending more money to only reach these people than to spend $50 and send it to the whole United States? That's where the power comes in. So I'm going to go ahead and put these ones in there. So now I'm going to go to exclude people. And again, use caution as far as discrimination. There's only one box for this. So it's an or statement and that's okay. I'm going to go ahead and do residential profile and you will see different profiles come up. So recent homeowners is here, new mover, likely to move, and recent mortgage borrower. So I want all these other ones so that I don't target them. Because a new recent home buyer isn't going to be buying my listing, so why spend my money on them, right? Um, recent mortgage borrower probably already got financing, so they're probably not likely to buy another home right this second. This is where I think you could pay more for it, yet I think you can get more value out of it. Um, residential profile, new mover. There we go. Somebody who moved within six months. Okay, so those are three of those. Well, now what else do I have to exclude? You guys. How many of you see ads from other agents? I'll tell you. I click on your ad. Thank you. I love to see what you're doing. And I make you pay for it because I'm not the right demographic. I'm not the right target. Now, yes, it's not possible to exclude every realtor from ever seeing it, yet would it be beneficial to kind of like not show it to realtors knowing they're not going to buy a home from me if it's in the area, right? Not that I don't think I want to do business with you. You're just not the right person to buy this home. So that's the option to say job title. So they have one here, real estate agent slash broker. It'll come up. Now, you want the one that says title, not job title, not just an interest, does that make sense? I can also do one. There's another one for real estate broker because we are brokers in the state, so it is different for job title. And then realtor, because some people put it in as realtor. Now, it's not going to exclude everybody, but I'm going to increase the odds that I'm not showing it in front of a bunch of agents. You can add a bunch of these, and that's why we tell you to save this, because I can save this audience and use it again knowing I've already excluded all these people. I'm targeting for my listings a specific zip code. I could change the zip code later if I use the audience again. But I don't have to come in here and add these people over and over again. So test it out. See what results you get. If you find it's a good audience, great. If you find you're not getting the traffic you want, maybe you remove some of these categories. Keep it more general. But at the end of the day, I want you to be smarter when you're on here and not work harder. Okay, so that's putting that onto there. So now we're down to connections. Is everyone following along so far? Are we still good with this? Great. So connections. This is your ability to say either how you're connected, like I can target people who like my page. Maybe it's a contest I'm running for my friends and family or clients, and I can run an ad just for people who like my page. 
Now, my goal is usually to get more people I don't know to like my page. So I tend to, surprisingly, I choose exclude people who like your page. Because if I already put the listing on my business page, do I have to spend money to show it to you again? No, I think I can run it and exclude people so that it's people who haven't visited my page and not only will they see my ad, they might click the like button to like my page as well. I'm enticing them to say, hey, if you don't like this listing, maybe you'll check me out. And again, brand awareness. You're going to at least see if it's, you know, J Sells Indie or whatever I'm calling myself, you're going to see my name everywhere and start recognizing me from signs out in the field, mailers that I'm doing, if I called and left you a voicemail, and if I've got you being watched on Facebook. So you can't exclude those. You can also exclude people um, in another way in different connections here. You don't have to worry about apps or events, and there's advanced combinations as well. So I'm going to save this audience so I can use it later. And this is the summary of my audience. I'm targeting Westfield, 46074, between 25 to 45, because it's a newer construction, and it's probably either your first or second home. Um, I'm going to be excluding recent home buyers, mortgage borrowers, or new movers. I'm going to exclude real estate broker, realtor, real estate agents, and I'm going to make sure I'm looking for people who are homeowners and might be likely to move. Because at the end of the day, my goal of, well, in this case, this would be if I was running a find out what your home is worth app. So that if they click the link to my site, it should say, enter your information here and get a CMA. That's the kind of demographic I would run for that. Now, in this case, we're looking to sell this listing, so it still works for that as well. However, I can exclude homeowners because I'm really looking for anyone, right? And I can exclude likely to move. Well, likely to move might still be relevant, though. I'd pay for data. If you can tell that someone's looking to buy or looking to move, maybe the lease is coming up and they're starting to search for apartments. Maybe they might change their mind if they saw an ad for a house. So I'm going to go ahead and save that, and I'll just call this Westfield 46074. Okay, and now we're getting into the other stuff here. Um, doo -doo -doo. All right. Automatic placement is the default. Automatic placement goes to Facebook, Instagram, something called an audience network, and Messenger, and it determines out of those what is the best one to reach to you. This is something Lori Ballin and I agree on. I don't use automatic dis um, placement because you'll find that audience network doesn't have the same demographics as Facebook does. So they're really just running ads on things like Pandora and other third-party apps or websites that aren't targeting that homeowner. You know what I mean? Like the Facebook targeting is for their statistics. That audience network goes to pretty much anybody who has a mobile device. So I can get a bunch of 10-year-olds clicking on this link just to click on it, and that's been on my budget. And you're going to see that in some of the examples I did. I'll show you what I ran so you can see what the data shows. And you'll see that when I ran one with the automatic placement, most of my clicks came from the audience network, and I didn't get any leads from it. So what you want instead is edit placements. And these are the options. So I'm going to say I just want it in the news feed. I don't need instant articles. I'm not going to have it in the right column, which who clicks on the right column anymore on Facebook, because that's desktop only. <coughs> That means if I'm on the desktop version, there's a little ad on the right. They don't work anymore. Google already got rid of that ability. On the Google homepages, they no longer have that right side banner, right? I'm not going to do Instagram, because while I did do Instagram for a few of these, you'll see I didn't get much interaction on there. So either my picture wasn't stimulating enough, because um, that's what they see is the visual. And um, so I wouldn't run it. And then this is the one I would definitely turn off. Audience network. Now, Messenger, again, I'm not ready to run a message to you because if I just message you right now saying, hey, do you want to buy a house? You're probably going to freak out and block me. So I would exclude that. So does that make sense? My goal is to just be in the Facebook feed because the data that I use, if you're going to exclude it down, is using Facebook's data and stuff that they paid for. If I go to Audience Network, it's just a third-party device that I have no control over. Now, if your goal is just to get random clicks, great. Spend the money on everything. But I know most of you aren't looking to do that. You want purposeful people to be on your site who are likely to do business with you. So that's important. And if you're following along in the guide, that will be on what we just did there is on page uh, 15. Thank you.
Jay? Yes. So any all other platforms, Instagram, and Twitter was on there at the time, but they cannot decipher between 18 to 30 and homeowners. Instagram probably can because Instagram's owned by Facebook, so I'm okay. sure Facebook is sharing data with themselves. Okay. Um, that one can. Instagram um, can be its own class of the marketing. I think if you have a great visual, like the picture I made for Doug for his listing would probably be work up well on Instagram because it gives some data in the picture. When I ran ads that just chose a picture, it didn't run as well. So that's why I also say trial and error. If you want to try this out, run the normal one and then compare it to one, right? The good news is you can try 20 bucks on one ad, spend another 20 bucks and run them side by side so that you can help quickly determine before you spend all your money for the month, what's getting the most interaction? Because you're gonna have to learn. I mean, they're really, this guide will give you some details on it, but it's not a surefire guarantee on any of this because there's so many options in here. And the way you would talk to a client is different than the way I'm gonna talk to a client. My personality is different than yours, and that's great. You're gonna have to find your message and how it reaches people. So for this simple purpose, I would just do Facebook feeds, and then when you're ready, turn on the others if you want to explore them. But Instagram would be the one that I would turn on first. Maybe Messenger if I thought it was something like, are you looking to buy a home? Download my free guide today and target home buyers if I want to message them in a different way. Right? Like I think millennials are more likely to get a private message from me saying, are you thinking about buying a home? Stop paying rent. Click here and download this guide today. They're more likely to actually do it versus me sending it to my mom and my mom going, why are you private messaging me this? What is this? And freaking out about it, right? Generational. That's okay. That person would rather click something and go to a website because we've all done that or get an email from you that says, I'll send you the email or where would you like me to mail you this guide? Right? It's your ability to put that there. You can even narrow it down by specific devices, feature phones, Android and iOS devices. I don't really go that crazy with it, but if you knew your message works really well on the iPhone because it's all pretty much consistent, then choose iPhone only. You know, you're excluding all the Android users, but, well, that's their fault. So, <laughs> no. <clears throat> the goal being, you want to reach people, but at the end of the day, where do most of us sit on Facebook? On our phone. You'll see in the demographics of the ad that I ran, because I want to really get into what you can see about each ad. You'll see that most of my people, maybe 10 people saw it on the desktop, and 900 people saw it on the mobile phone. Tells you right there, like, if I can tell it right now, we used to have the ability to say ignore desktop. They took that away. I would tell it to ignore the desktop every time. But it's so little, it's not even worth messing with anymore. So they're doing that for you. Budget, everyone's favorite. <laughs> what do you spend? So this actually wasn't too bad. It was doing it by $5 a day. Because that's the last few times I've run my ads. I'll usually go, I'm willing to spend $5 a day, maybe more. Right? What's your budget for that listing? Now, if I know I'm going to get an $8,000 commission check out of that house, maybe you spend up to 10% of that. Maybe I'll spend up to $800 to really get it out there if I wanted to. Because it's kind of like a referral fee, isn't it? You didn't have the client up front. Spending some advertising here, I probably can spend less money than a 25% referral fee by budgeting some money to spend on an ad, which will be some of your power for that. That will come into play. Have you thought about people who buy outside of Indianapolis, right? Who's moving here? Who are the new companies coming into town? Have you thought about running an ad to New York if they're coming from New York? Or if there's a um, tech company that relocated from another state and you knew the job's coming, I would start targeting those states that they came from near that job. If Amazon opens their hub here, hello, where are those people coming from? I better start targeting all those executives and running Facebook ads in another state. That's going to be even more important for the demographics. Have you thought about running an ad in another area? I have clients down in Fort Lauderdale that know most of their clients come from retirees who buy a second home at first to eventually retire. So we actually run ads to those people specifically in the older age group who are thinking about retiring. Maybe it's 50 plus. We target the message towards them about the lifestyle of South Florida send them listings and stuff, and they get a lot of traction from that, and they run the ad in New York, within 25 miles of New York, and Boston. Because that's where most of their people came from. They knew their client demographics. You're going to know that for yours if you've been in the business a while. Where do your clients come from? That's why at the end of all of our listings in the MLS, it asks us, where did this person come from? What zip code? Because it's collecting data. 
to tell you that 90% of our sales happen right here in Indianapolis, right? From someone maybe moving downtown to Carmel or from Carmel to downtown. And that's great. Then that would be my message. I might be in Carmel and run an ad for downtown or vice versa, knowing that you're ready to, the kids are off to school and I'm going to go after the people ready to go back to the city because the kids are off of college. What does that demographic look like for you? That's really going to come to play. That's where this is going to really matter. So that you send the message to the right person in the right state in the right demographic to say, hey, I think this downtown loft is perfect for that empty nester to have the lifestyle they always wanted. Kids are off to school, feeling, you know, home's too big. Check out this 962 square foot, two bedroom home downtown. Right? That's going to come to play. Okay, so when you're doing your budget, there's two options. Daily, what are you willing to spend? Now, again, always think of it at least three days to seven days or longer. So I'm okay in my head with $35 an ad, so I'll do it for seven days for five bucks. That's just something that I've done. Now, will I reach more people if it was $10 a day and I ran it for seven days? Yes. It has more time and more people to reach to quickly adjust itself to get more clicks. However, what's in your budget? Right? So when I ran all these ads, I ran four recently. Each of them ran for $35 for seven days. <clears throat> it's a bit of change, yet if I get more traction on my training website, if I get a lead from someone looking to sell their home here, that's a referral fee, you can justify that. Right? Don't spend money if you don't have it. Take advantage of the free stuff. But if you have a budget, put it aside. Your next listing, take $200 out of that listing and say, this is put aside for Facebook ads so that I can start building a business. The top teams in the world, they're spending probably thousands of dollars on Facebook because they have the money to do it and they're getting a huge return and they're dominating Facebook for that. You can eventually get there. So start with your daily budget. Now if you do lifetime budget, you get some more controls. A lifetime budget means if I spend $350, total whatever dates are here, it will give me the ability to set what time of day the ad runs. So if you do the daily, it's just going to run automatically anytime. If I set a lifetime budget of $350 in a month to run this ad, I can tell it to only run from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., right? Maybe I only want it to run during my hours of operations. Or maybe I'm going to want to run the ad in the evenings. Maybe my clients are coming from those people at night who work third shift, who don't have the agents because they feel everyone's working 9 to 5. You get to choose that. Now, I would recommend... Keep it on the daily, right? Don't worry about blocking your time out yet. Look at the analytics. It'll tell you what time people were on. It'll tell you what age group people were looking at your ad. It's going to give you a lot of information that will help you say, maybe I will do my next one this way. So for your first ad, I would keep it on automatic and then evaluate the data to determine, well, it looks like I didn't spend any money here and I can readjust it. That's going to be the power in it. So I'll leave it on the daily budget. Now, I don't want to run too long, so if it's today the 30th, oh, it's already too late, so I'll do the 31st to the 2nd. Six days at, oh, $20 a day, nope, we'll change it back to five. There you go, about $29.78, I can do that for six days. So you see, you can do it inexpensively. To me, I'm sure we're already out there spending $500 on this magic pill and magic website and well, take a third of that and spend 50 bucks here, you'll probably get better results. But whatever you do, make sure you have a system to follow up with that person because you can get the lead, but if you don't call them again, if you don't have them on a database, if you don't keep in touch with them or get what they want, right? A lot of internet people aren't ready to buy today. It's great when they are, but a lot of them you need to nurture. So make sure you have your systems in place. Utilizing eEdge if you have that with Keller Williams or your own database system that's going to systematically track them and keep in touch. Okay, so next is going to ask me how am I going to optimize my link for ads? So, this is a couple new things link clicks, right? We deliver your ads to the right people, and when you click, that's when you pay. Now, initially, that click might cost me $5 for one click because it hasn't really established itself. Facebook is smart enough that it will auto adjust to determine the ads and kind of play around with what you're doing and try to automatically make sure you're efficient on your ad, which is good. 
So that first click might cost me $5, but then tomorrow I might get two clicks for $5. And then the third day I might get six clicks and 10 clicks. And then by the end, I might be paying 10 cents, 10 cents per click. So it will adjust itself. Link clicks is a good one. Landing views, right? This is will deliver your ads to people who are likely to click on your ads and landing page. So that's if you use the landing page version. Again, link clicks will do the same thing. It's just another style of looking there. Um, I would encourage you to explore what the landing page options are here if you're looking at doing it. Um, there's a couple other resources I can give you if you need help with landing pages. And then impressions. So this comes into that little hand out there. What's an impression? Does anybody know? Yeah, kind of. It's basically the number of times a post is displayed. But here's the difference. An impression means if I see the video once, and then Jordan's my friend and he shares the video and I see it a second time, it's counting each of those as a view. So it's kind of like per view. So some person might see it three times, two times, right? If it's something people keep sharing. So that's an impression. Now, if you're just looking for brand awareness and get things out, you can pay by impression. But usually as an agent, I want them to do something. Click here, like my page, download this guy, write a call to action. So most of mine are always gonna be link clicks. But you can do impressions just to make sure as many people as possible see it. And then daily unique reach, this is your ability to deliver your ads to people up to once a day. So I can just target somebody and say once a day I want to make sure that I'm in front of you. It's a different way. I think all of us for now, link clicks is what you need. And then I would encourage you to come here and look at more options. Bid amount. Automatic. Let Facebook set the bid and helps you with the most link clicks to the best price. So basically, this is them automatically adjusting. Automatically looking at your ad and changing it based on, we're going to get more clicks at this time, we might get more clicks with this message. It's doing it automatically, which it actually does a pretty good job. Or you can manually come in here and say, here's how much I'm willing to pay. Well, I doubt they're going to give me $2 per click because I haven't proven to them what I'm sharing is important. So notice it says suggested bid, $5.96. Well, that's more than a day. <laughs> so automatically let them take the budget I have and figure out the best use of it. That's probably your best bet until you feel advanced enough to really learn how to manually do it. When you get charged, link per click or impression, again, it's another option here. I want them to only charge me for the clicks. Notice scheduling is grayed out because if I don't do a lifetime budget, I can't tell when it runs, so it runs all the time. You will learn that some people maybe you get better bang for your buck running at evening because most of our daily budgets run out during the day. So maybe if I run an ad at 10 o'clock at night, I might reach a different audience. But then again, are you willing to work at 10 o'clock at night? <laughs> maybe it's not the right people either. So pay attention to that. So do we feel good about what these options are here? That's why they're in the guide as well. And explaining the definitions is on this sheet of what an impression is. Okay, we're almost done with this one. Now we get into the visual and the fun stuff. Yes, Jordan. Sorry. So if you click link clicks as yeah. like your optimization for ad delivery, mm -hmm. but then you say, I want to get charged by, by impressions, like yeah. how, what's, I guess I'm just confused on why you can get charged for something that you're not going after, because if I was going after impressions, then I would say, let's go after impressions, but just charge when people click my page, and then I would get more impressions. Right, you get more impressions, but guess what happens? You spend more money on those impressions than you do on your clicks. If I have 500 people looking at my page before one person hits like, or like clicks on the link, I'm paying for that one, but 500 people saw it. If I paid by impressions, I paid for 500 people to view it. The budgets are a little bit different. Now it's cheaper, for uh, as far as like the cost of a click costs more and the cost of a view is less, yet I'm more likely to reach more people by the byproduct of hit the link. Most of what you're running isn't just to be in front of people. Most of what you're running is to get them to do something, so pay for the clicks is really your best bet. Okay. And then if you're not sure, I would run two ads side by side and change it. Do one ad that says links per click and one ad that says impressions and see if it's better for you. Did it get more people to have your brand awareness? Did you get more likes out of one ad on your business page, or did you get more clicks by the other one? So that's one thing you're going to hear a lot of. They have the ability to do um, testing. 
If you have the budget, do that. Because it's the only way you're going to find out if it works that way. Or try the next one, the same ad, but do it differently. All right. So first thing it says now is choose your business page. So which page am I doing this under? Make sure you choose the right business page. I'll do it under the office one because we're not really running it. Now you can link Instagram. If you want to run your ad on Instagram, you have to have an Instagram account. And you have to sign into it here. Since it's owned by Facebook, it'll just say log in and then it will link the two together. Now I will tell you on Instagram, a majority of what they see is the image and barely any of the text. So if you have a text heavy post, like I did for um, uh, one of my ads there, I didn't get barely any interaction on Instagram because when I looked, the picture didn't tell anything. It just said, here's some people like looking like they're going to a job, but there was nothing in the picture, right? So it's a different message. Now your options for formatting, you could do a carousel. These are great for listings, by the way, because a carousel means I'm gonna put up to five images maybe, and you can do a quick scroll through on Facebook and then choose to click and go somewhere else. Now those do well, I can choose this and then add six images. Single image though is cool because then it allows me to run six versions of my app. So I can have six different images and change the text on each ad and let Facebook tell me which one of these versions responded the best. So I'll show you how that version works because that's what we're going to use. Now we talked about video. So single video is here, right? Creating a video. Keep it short if you're going to run an ad on a video. And make sure if you do a video now, we do captions. So Kristen did a video recently. And Kristen, when did the uh, captions come up? after you hit post. Yeah. <laughs> so when you're doing your video, if you post a video, you have to post it first, and then afterwards, Facebook says, do you want to add captions to it? So that's the better way of doing it, and then, yeah. You have to be on your desktop, too. Like you yeah, yes, desktop. thank you. you desktop only. Yeah. Yet, what are most people doing on their mobile phone? They're not hitting play on the video because it's making noise at work. They're reading. I do it all the time now. You probably are doing it and not even noticing you started adapting to that. Make sure that when you see the video that there's text at the bottom. So that's what we did for Dustin's, by the way, that got him 6,000 views. We took his video of him going through the house saying, guess the price, and just added text so people can listen to it. And he went from his highest ever view being like 1,000 to six. Little things, right? So single video, you can create a slideshow, which is basically what all of our home tours do on the websites now, where they're just a video slideshow of photos. Our collection is new. This is something you can explore. A collection is a mix of video and um, pictures. It's a cool concept. It's just a little bit more advanced. So if you're ready for that, do it. If you're not, stick with one image for now. And then you can do them. All right, got to get moving. So I'm going to choose a single image. And then you get to browse your library to choose your own picture. Or right here is free stock images. As I said, you don't need to have your own images if you don't have them. They have stock images and they have some good ones. So if I chose a free stock image, now clearly this is a listing. I'm not going to choose stock images of a listing. Yet, if I was looking for people, I can search stock images here and look for somebody. Um, home sold. Maybe I want to look at people and I can look at people in the yard for home sold or people without. Personally, when I've ran ads, I've done a mix of people of a sign in front of a house and then a family with a dog, an older couple, and surprisingly, people in the picture with the home sale sign got more responses than just a house with a sign in front. You're going to explore this and find that sometimes that does better. Like this graphic of a soul probably won't do much because it doesn't really tell anything. Because what is it? That photo elicits emotion, and emotion makes them act. So what is that emotion? Who do you picture in that house? If I'm targeting a first time home buyer, I'm gonna target the cute couple that's younger on one photo and maybe the cute couple with the kid in the next one or the growing family in the other one to say, hey, I'm here to help you. And this message is for this person. And if I was looking for that person looking to downsize their home, I would use the cute couple getting ready to retire or enjoying themselves in the home are more likely to click on it because they would see themselves in that picture. So that's when you do your own. I'll choose my own image so you can see, because I created one. So I've talked about Canva all the time. This was the graphic I made on Canva for Doug's post. In Canva, it already has the size I need for a Facebook ad dimension. 
Now, what we found and what Lori Ballen has tested is that if you do a photo collage, right, more than one photo, people were more responsive than just here's the house, because if it's not a great looking house, you might forget that it's got a granite kitchen, right? Show the best feature of the house if you're going to do one picture or do a quick collage. So I've got a great show, a photo of the front. I've got a great kitchen, open area, bathroom. It shows some stuff, right? And with Canva, I was able to say quickly, new construction, where it is. And I put the zip code there because remember, we're targeting a zip code. So I wanted those people to be like, oh, that's my zip code. Oh, I live there. Three bedroom, two and a half bath, two car garage, 2,000 square feet, added Doug's logo, and then added the office logo here. Right? All Canva is is a layering system. And you can choose in here under elements. They have some um, frames or grids. And this grid just says, hey, inside this shape, how do you want me to arrange a bunch of photos? I could have done this with one big photo and five little ones. Use the space they give you, and then you just drag the picture in there. So I don't have time to show you how I created it. Just know this is one of those images. you think that would be more appealing than just a picture that says, here's the house, buy me. That's it. People want to observe as much information as fast as possible now. So that's the image we're going to use. So I'll come back here to Ad Manager, upload image, download, and here it is. So in this case, I'm only using one image. I could use multiple to try them out. Now, a suggestion that I heard from Lori Bound that I liked was staying at mobile news feed because what did we just say? They're on their phone. So how does this look in the app right now? So right away, I get a pretty good image from that picture. I can read it if I was on my phone. Remember, we're looking this close. I can read it. It's got some information, logos, and then I'd want to write something about this home. So what you would do, here's the website URL. Well, I've got it up on web Doug's website. This is where I want them to go. So I'm going to copy this link. Now you can copy the whole link. Or you know how we talked about it before, sometimes you need to shorten the link to fit into Twitter or those other um, social media platforms. So I pulled up Bitly. It's a service. There's a hundred of them that takes your long link and makes it short. So now I can copy that link. That's the link I'm going to put into my ad over here. Do, do, do. Paste. Now it's going to pull some information from there. Notice there was no text here. It's going to pull a little bit of text. This elegant Estridge home, built home can be found in Hamilton. So hey, it did that. It pulled it from the website. Somewhere in that website, they must have put as a keyword some of these things here. It put the address, which is great. Now a tip I learned that I thought was cool, instead of this elegant Estridge home here, dot, 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 why don't you put the price there? Sometimes don't people want to know the price because that might make them want to click on it. So that text down below would be under the second one. Down, do, 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 I think this one. Let's see. So it is 369.9, I think. Yep, 900. Nope, it's not there. There it is. So this upper part about text is what goes here, like you're writing a post. Now, we haven't done the testing with it. We talked about it last time. When you're doing your post, put some emojis in there, right? People respond to that now. Don't we all speak? Um, you know, it's like hieroglyphics again. <laughs> we're, we're speaking with that emoji. That tongue must say it's something fun. That poop, well, maybe I should stay away from that house. Like, whatever icon you're using. So it does visually stand out. Put them in there. Test that out, right? That's something you can test out to see, did they respond to that? If it's a younger millennial, first time home buyer, they would respond to cute little house pictures and the bed next to the bedrooms and the bath next to the bathrooms, right? Because visually in their head, they would understand what that means quicker than trying to figure it out if they were reading a long paragraph, right? Keeping it short. So that's what you'd put here. So I'll just leave it as it is. You get the idea. Headline is what shows up here is the headline. So I like that I put the address since I already have in the graphic the zip code and the, um, where it's at. So they should know where it is because it's already in the picture. So I'll leave that there, but you can change any of these things here. Now call to action. This is where you change the button. What does it say? 
So I can say send a message. Maybe you say message me today. Private message me on Facebook. That is an option. Maybe for a younger demographic, they're likely to do that because I don't have to leave Facebook to talk to you. But if you do that, make sure you respond and that you're available for a private message because they're going to private message your page. So if it's JSales Indie is my page, that's where they're going to private message and I have to make sure I'm there to say, oh, thank you for checking out the home. What questions can I answer? Would you like the schedule showing? So that is an option you could use, but that wouldn't be a click through. Like I, they would click it, like I'd pay for the click of the message, but they wouldn't go anywhere but messaging me. So be prepared to send them something. Um, apply now, that works well for like job ones, but I don't think apply now would work if I'm buying a house. Book now, probably not, unless you set a consultation. Contact us could work, right? Donate. Download is the one they're testing out now because maybe it's download the flyer from the open house, right? Download this PDF of everything about the home. You could use that one. Listen time, these are all new ones now. Listen now, if you had something to listen to, like a video or something. Request time, you can do this for request showing. See menu, shop now, sign up, or watch more. So most likely you'd either do like learn more or click on something which is what I'll leave it at. And that's what it turns, changes into right here. This becomes the learn more button. So if this home was enough to go, oh, okay, hey, that's our price. Oh, it's in our area. It's new construction, honey, let's go check it out. Because that's what I want them to do. Does that make sense how you can do that? And then down below this little newsfeed link is what replaced what was underneath the link here. See above my link, the price, that's where I just put the price. Facebook Pixel. So this is the part for the Pixel that we talked about. This is the ability to track how they came from Facebook and went to your website. Now, if you're using the KW website powered by Playster, this Facebook Pixel link is just a copy, and you paste it into one little setting box that says paste it here. That's how mine's active right now with the little green dot because yesterday it was red because my website didn't have the Pixel on it yet because it needs to track it. So whatever site they're going to, in this case, if this was Doug's ad, Doug would have to go to his website and make sure somewhere on his website, the Facebook pixels there to track someone leaving Facebook and going to his page, right? So that I can then run an ad to them. If this isn't turned on, you won't be able to run a targeting ad later. So like I said, that retargeting is more advanced, but that's what you want to look for is make sure it's here and you can click the I to learn more about it. You can have multiple Facebook pixels if you want to track different things. For most of you, one for your website is going to be enough to at least, I want to know that you went to my website. So when I private message you or run an ad in front of you that says, thanks for visiting my website, or hey, you're seeing me again, I want to be able to cyberstalk you. This is the app and thing that does that. Because isn't that what they're doing? Yes. So you have to be turned on there. Did you say something about Playster? It needs to be turned on here, and then it needs to be copied into Playster. Okay. So Playster in the site settings has a site, um, uh, it's the same place where the Google tools go for Google tracking. It'll have a Facebook pixel just pasted there. If you're using a different website than Playster, most of them all have the ability to get it on there. Just search for GoDaddy website and Google pixel, you'll find the instructions. It's really just making sure that code's there so Facebook recognizes it and can track the data back and forth. And that's it on that end. So if I thought this was okay, you can see different versions here if I had others. So that's what it looks like on a feature phone. Basically, if they went to the phone version instead of the app, that's what it looks like on the desktop. Clearly, I have more room here. Yet, I always want to make sure it looks good mobily because if this is a bunch of dot, dot, dots, people aren't likely to click on those to read more details, right? Keep it short. Make sure your image says something in there. Then when I'm ready, I would hit confirm, and it would do the authorization to make sure it's going to charge me for them. But you don't pay today. You pay once they've determined time has gone by, and it's not consistent. Like, I've gotten billed at random times, but I know in that seven days, the maximum I'm going to pay is $35 because that's what I told them. So I'm going to show you now the last 20 minutes what does the demographics look like, right? What is the actual, what can I tell from my ads? Anyone have any questions on that part of running the ads? Like I said, this guide is your guide here. At the end of the day, you need to determine what do I want to give them, what do I want from them, and who am I going after? Like, what is my ideal client right now that I want to work with? If it's listings, then I encourage you to do a um, CMA. 
if you need help, like how do I do a um, lead generation page? When it comes to um, the listings, um, a service is called listings to leads. So listings to leads is listings, the number two leads. This service allows you to create an individual web page for all of your listings, and it has the ability to run landing pages, yet it provides you a CMA from Zillow. <laughs> so instead of somebody going to Zillow to get the data, I'm not saying it's perfect. Isn't that what they're doing now anyways? They go to Zillow and run a CMA, and then they say my home is worth X. Well, we know that that's just data. This tool basically does the same thing, except they're going to my website and telling me Hi, Jay. I'm Sally Smith down the road. Here's my address. How much is it worth? And I'll give her the data just like Zilla would, yet I have an opportunity to say, hey, thank you for doing that online. Can I come see the home because I can really tell you the true value, right? It's different because at the end of the day, if they go to Zillow and find out what their home is worth or Zestimate, who are they calling? Zillow. If they come to my site and get that data, who are they calling? Me. And I have the opportunity to reach out to them and saying, thanks for checking on the home value. What would you like to do? So that will be its own class, but that's one of those services that I've used. Um, I can get you a code if you need for a longer uh, demo. All right, so let's go to Ad Manager. This is the Ad Manager. So here's my recent ads. And this is going to tell me things like how many results I have, how many reaches, how many people saw it, my impressions, my cost per result my actual spend, and when it ends, frequency, all kinds of data. This is also where you're going to go to edit these things. So the first one was I talked about that video I ran, right? I wanted to reach people I didn't know within Keller Williams or real estate industry to watch my three-minute tips on social media strategies. And if they're with Keller Williams, to click here to visit KW Connect and watch more videos with the goal of bringing more followers to my KW Connect channel was my whole goal, and bringing my awareness and brand that I'm helping people with social media around the world, right? Now, that was just for me. However, I want to show some of these results here. I think that's pretty good. I went from reaching a few people here to over 2,000 people watched three seconds or more. What is the name of the game? Stopping the scroll. If I'm scrolling like this, three seconds is an eternity. <laughs> that means they went one, two, three, and decided to keep watching or scroll past it. Yet... Three seconds stands out in your head more than the scroll that I didn't remember you seeing your post, right? I thought that was pretty good. My reach, though, was 2271, meaning 200 people roughly probably saw the video twice or three times. And that's okay. That means they watched it again or shared it with somebody and that person saw it again. It means it went somewhere. And I didn't run this for very long. Here's my impressions. Oh, that's what it is. The results were how many people actually watched it. The reach were how many people I reached individuals, yet over 3,800 people saw it. So that was actually over 1,600 people saw it more than once. That's pretty good. And that means either they watched it again, they shared it again, they saw it again in multiple ways. I do that all the time. If, if Friends is getting paid for every time I rewatch a clip of the pivot scene or something, <laughs> they would make a fortune. <laughs> Don't you find yourself scrolling through the videos and all of a sudden you watch one video, you watch another, watch another? I can't tell you I watch the same stupid clips over and over again. They're making a killing off me. But that's what we do as consumers now, right? So if they watched it once and they found it helpful, great. I'm doing it just to help people. And it reaches my audience farther. So that was a video one that I ran. Now I can come here to see what happened with it. And if you see this view charts, I now have the ability to view the chart on this one listing. And now it breaks down my performance to see... When did people see it? So the first day, it was one cent per click, you know, result, right? 54% result rate. I can see the different demographics. I spent $28 on this. This demographics tells me I've actually got a good blend of women and men watching and clicking on the video, which is good, right? Do you think you can cater your message differently if it was a woman looking for it? Maybe she wants to see the family. And that would tug her emotional strings more than if I had done, look at this fancy garage. I could probably get the men to go up if I did like the, the tool time garage, pimped out garage, right? That would probably get a different response. My brother-in-law is looking for houses and all he cared about was the garage and everything. This is one space he wanted, 
right? It's a different message. But wouldn't that help you know that if you see more women are watching this, then change the message a little bit. Find something that's interesting to them or get a, another spokesperson that speaks to that demographic, right? Age range too. I'm actually very surprised by this. I've got a majority of age range in here. Pretty much every group is touched. Now, mostly 24 and older, but even those 18 to 24 year olds saw it. I got a bunch of seniors, 65 plus, that saw it too. It's just where do you want to target your message? Do you see how that might be helpful when you're targeting that first time home buyer? If it's a bunch of 65 plus looking at it and none of them are clicking on it, it's probably not the right person to talk to. You need to change your message, or at least, if anything, your imagery should be more about the lifestyle or the younger family so that they're more drawn to click on it. That image speaks to them. There's a massive amount of data in here. It's really cool to see them there. I could do by placement. This is what tells you that audience network, Facebook itself, Instagram, and Messenger. It actually tells you how many. So here's my over two, right? My reach and my results. I can split it down by desktop only. So I got ooh, 34 to four, 36 out of 3,000. What does that tell you? They're on the phone. So everything you do should be about mobile. Your website, is it mobile responsive? Is your ad mobile responsive? Is your um, guide mobile responsive? What? But that was your over 65 crap. There it is. Exactly. That is it. Thank you for looking. <laughs> it's just a good dig. All right. So I'm going to switch it back to mobile, and you can see the difference. So. I just got. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to throw here. It's, uh, but you can see the difference, right? That's a huge difference. That's what I discovered over this time. So if you want to explore that auto placement, go ahead, decide what it is. Yet I'm telling you, in my experience, they're on their mobile phones. So why spend money on the other devices if your goal is to get a result? If your goal is just to spend money and let people click away, then do all those things. But you guys have an ability to really narrow it down and reach the right people. So that was that ad. I can also edit my ad in here. To come in here, here's my ad set, which is my targeting, my placement, my budget. If I want to adjust my budget anytime, I would just come here and increase my budget or decrease my budget, right? I can come to the ad and I can mess with it. So here's my ad on this one was a video, right? Now the text might've been too long. It fits in the mobile. Here's the video, right? That's auto playing. It's not scrolling all the way, right? I can see the different versions of the ads. The desktop looks good. Instant articles, I didn't turn them all off. Oh, this is going to all the different ones. But this was a video in there, right? When it was the video saved and going in there. So it was more like, oh, it was a boost. I think this is a, a boost. So you can actually break it down to modify your ad and see there. So here was, um, which is the one I want to do? Listings in India. I think this is the one. So this is an ad I was running recently for... Um, the CMA, right? Find out how much your home is worth. Now, I reached 936 people, not quite as high as the others, and I got 13 clicks. Out of those 13 clicks, I actually got three people who gave me their address and did the CMA. But that's three quality people that I can now contact and stay in touch with to see if they're looking to sell their home. For 27 bucks, it's kind of worth three names to now build a relationship with. I'm not expecting 900 people to click on it because, again, this wasn't just a click. They had to click and enter in their address and then give me their name and phone number for it to be complete. So three full registrations is good on that end. Right? Now, at the end of the day, it averaged out to $1.52 per cost. But if I'm spending $5 a day, my first day was not $1. See how there's just kind of like here's the average that goes through. So one day I spent almost $4 on the click result. It's taking the budget you gave it and it's trying to find the best way with it. So you will see the numbers kind of jump around. In this one, I might do better to raise my budget or change my message and see if I get a different response. My demographics are actually different in this one. So I'm definitely reaching more of that mid-range. For men, I'm reaching an older range, right? On the women, a majority of the clicks came from that 25 to 34. I'm speaking to that millennial that's looking. 
right? So something in my message must have attracted them because that was five of the 13 clicks came from them. Here was three clicks came from men, 35 to 44. Two clicks came from the older generation, four total of those two, right? It really can give you a lot of information. So here when I come on this side, right, I got the 13 clicks, one Instagram view, but no clicks on Instagram. So my message was not Instagram friendly when I turned it on. There's the older people, as you were saying, probably the 65 plus were on the desktop version. And then my mobile version were most of them, right? It's kind of that 80-20 rule and everything is crazy. So now let's look at what does the ad look like? So in this one, I did one ad, but I ran five different images. So what's cool is I'm going to be able to see what that did to it. So let me close this and show you, uh, where is it? I think it's inside. Perfect. So when I go into this link, this is the different images I used. So this was the image that got the most response. And surprisingly, this image is of a for sale sign. Out of all the home values that I said, find out what your home is worth. This was a home with like pennies, right? This was somebody with a chart saying home values are up. This came from the landing page saying, find out what your home value is. This showed a home there. And the one image clicked on the most was the silly for sale sign in the yard. I can't answer it, right? Your demographic is different. So what I would do is I would maybe run the budget again, and then I would get rid of these images and find more with the for sale sign, and I would play with the for sale sign and families in the picture. And I bet you I'd get a different result click. That's why that one image with six options is valuable because you really are basically running six ads at the same time, and it's going to pick the best ad for you and run that one more often. It's really exciting that they're doing that to give you that option. So those are the ones there. And I can see out of this, 800 people it saw. I had 1,350 impressions, meaning people saw it more than once. And I spent a little bit more, $1.68 per click, because the rest of them were rejected. These two didn't cost me anything because Facebook initially said, they're crap. <laughs> Stop showing these ones. And I didn't pay anything for them. They're doing that for you. It is good. Let them do that. Take advantage of this demographic. So don't just set it and forget it. You have to come in here and you have to look at it and say, is this doing what I need it to? Which version responded well? And then I would make more images like it. And then I would explore it with think emotionally about it, right? If we know the emotion gets them to do something, what will emotionally make them click on that home value? Oh, the kids in the front. Oh, I'm ready for kids, honey. Let's buy a house. That might be the time to sell that town home and move into a bigger house. And that picture could elicit an emotion around that. So that's why it's important to come in here and really look at it. So that was the one there. Let's come to, that's all of my accounts. Here are the ones I did for um, this Facebook class. I ran one. Now this is unique and I don't, I think I spent a lot of money on this one. Mostly because it was such a specific message. I think I narrowed it down too far. So learn from this. <laughs> learn what not to do. And this ad I ran, I reached 197 people. Clearly they saw it over and over again because it's 959 impressions. I got five responses, which isn't bad if my goal was to get people who aren't with us to come to a class and experience our culture. Now, yes, I spent more on that ad. I could have done different things with it. So now I would look at it and say, if I ran this again, maybe there's another way to run it. Now, I did one image, but you'll see the image I created was very simple. I didn't want to brand it to anything. I didn't want to say Keller Williams on it. I made one little image that just said uh, Facebook class. Let me see. It's here in my designs. It was this image because I thought when we're sending it to people outside, I don't want anyone to feel like I'm just trying to recruit them because I'm not. I'm inviting them to experience our culture and through there achieve if they want to go for it, right? because we're not here to pressure anybody. So this was the graphic with it, but maybe this wasn't enough to say Facebook ads for them. Maybe if the computer had a different image in it. Maybe if it was that Facebook graphic I have with the Facebook for sale sign in the front yard. I like that image because it kind of just says something different, right? That's the image on top of here. That to me at least ties in real estate and Facebook together. So that image might have done differently. I could have benefited on this ad from trying a couple versions and then seeing which one responded well. 
I think that's why I spent so much on the click. And I also told it to target um, real estate agents in the area. And I think I said exclude Keller Williams because you guys already knew about it and I was telling you in the class, right? So it's just a different way of running it and why you want to reevaluate and see if maybe there's another way of doing it. So that was just the one example. Just do something different with them, right? Play around with the different options there and decide what you want to do with it. So I got five people reached it, but I spent about $6 each and I spent $30. Again, it may or may not be worth it to you. My goal is to, if I'd ran this longer, if I had more image options, I probably would have had five choices and maybe I ended at $2 a click because this image responded better. Or maybe I was too specific with my demographics. You're going to have to play with it. All right, so that's really showing you that there. Um, I talked about the impressions, the reach, the targets. There's all kinds of stuff here. Remember, this is Facebook Ads 101. You're not going to walk away feeling like a master today, and that's okay. Yet, I want you to be a student of this. If this is something you want to do as your lead generation, whether you're hiring a company or doing it yourself, study this. Search for the latest articles. Who's writing about it? So Lori Ballin's a great resource. She has a lot of videos on her website. Um, I study, um, Kate was one I recently did. She's got a lot of things on there. Um, Katie, and why am I blanking her name? I know her name. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of different resources. Take advantage of the resources on the back. The Realtor Association does guides once in a while, right? Who's doing them? But make sure it's current. Because the guide I did, the class I recorded like this a year ago, it's changed. Some of the stuff's the same, but the way it interacts is different. Messages is new. Um, the ability to not say, have you lived in your home six years or more is gone. That was a great feature because that's most of the people that were looking are six years or longer in their home. Well, they took that away and changed it into like likely to move. It's probably still there. It's just called something different. So that's a lot of the value with this. I hope you guys got value. Does anybody have any ahas they can share with me about what they learned? Yeah, That's the specific amazing. data. It's, it's creepy, but it's actually not surprising if you think about how many things run in, across your desk right. and your, your phone. That's how they've been getting you is all this data. So Facebook is smart that they've compiled the data, paid for data, and that as an advertiser, you have access to that. Not to mention it's affordable. For Correct. New agents or established agents. It's affordable at any price range. And one day when you're ready, like I said, don't spend a lot of money until you are a master of it. Start with a couple little ads. You'd be surprised what you get. And if you don't get anything from the first ad, do you not get the experience of it, though? So that the next time you don't do the same thing or you try different stuff. And if you need help with it, there are resources with there and there are companies that can help. You do not need to be an expert in this, but I challenge you to take advantage of this tool. It is available for you. Facebook can be done. There are people who are not tech savvy that have mastered Facebook. And I didn't have time to show it today, but I'll finally plug in that, do you know Keller Williams has a partnership with Facebook? So remember we have what's called Keller Labs right now. Keller Labs is the ability to beta test software that Keller Williams is developing. Right now, we have a tool called Facebook Ad Accelerator on KDB Connect, and they're in a lab status. So I am part of the lab, and shame on me, I did not run an ad before today's class. So I don't have the ability to show you an example of running one there. What it does is what I just showed you, simplified. You do not need to know the demographics and narrow it down. Facebook takes our knowledge from Keller Williams for real estate and Facebook's knowledge of social media and combine the two together to be a smarter artificial intelligence and maximize your ad for you. So everybody testing the ad, if I spent $50 and on my own, maybe I got like two clicks out of it. If I spent it there, I might've gotten 25 clicks for the same cost. It's being even more efficient. So you do not need to be a specialist in there. What I challenge you to do is on KDB Connect, sign up for the lab and be a beta tester. So under resources and technology, you will find the option for Keller Cloud. That's all the new technology we're trying and the lab's dashboard tells you what's going on, but you can come here and on the Facebook ad accelerator, you can sign up to be a beta tester. Right there. Sign up to join the Facebook Ad Accelerator. It will simplify the way you view the demographics. It will tie in things. It's brilliant. And everybody who has spent money on it has got a better return by letting Facebook and Keller Williams do it for them. And all they said was what they wanted. Here's my listing. 
advertise it. Here's my brand awareness, push it. And they did the smart work to determine who would be the right person looking for that type of thing so that you don't need to be an expert on this. So that's how you sign up for it. And then um, under resources and technology, if you want to check the status of what's happening with any of this technology, they have this labs dashboard, which tells you what status this thing is in. So the status of this one is for doo -doo -doo, Facebook ad, et cetera, right there. Means right now there's 1,100 people testing it and 1,600 in, in waiting status. That's a lot of opportunity. There's 170 plus thousand agents. Get on the list. From here, you can do ad creation, listing import, instant ads, ad spending calculator, and promote your posts. It's for the US and Canada. Um, I would get on that list. I'm on there, and I promise that I will run an ad here the next week to test it out and let you know what was different from what I ran here. What results did I get? Right? So I can actually show you the demo of that. Thank you guys. I'll stay after and answer some questions, but that is our class today. I hope you got some good value and that you guys are going to start taking this stuff. Please just don't sit on the smart notebooks. They're not going to make you money. Either implement them or hire someone to implement it. <laughs> yeah.